drinking Coca-Cola, you know, to uh, you know, something that somebody would sell me at Whole Foods. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't see smiles on the faces of people at Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our deep dive on Coca-Cola, KO, stock in 2024. Today, we're exploring whether Coca-Cola, the iconic beverage giant, stands as a compelling investment opportunity in the current year. I've been getting a bunch of messages, sliding into my DMs like they're on a sugary rush from value investors questioning the value in Coca-Cola. And they're all buzzing. Why is Warren Buffett's mug next to Coca-Cola in your analysis? Now, as many of you may know, Warren Buffett isn't just sipping on Coca-Cola for the taste. He's been guzzling down those shares because he believes in the company's value. But the real question that's bubbling up is why. Why is the Oracle of Omaha so sweet on Coca-Cola? So, grab a Coke and let's crack into the wisdom of Buffett himself. Coca-Cola, I think, is, ever since I described it that way, in terms of the, I talked about in terms of the, the probabilities that they would dominate the soft drink market and not lose market share in any way that they would grow over time. You know, it's, it's happening year after year. I don't think the global market share of Coca-Cola products has ever been higher than it is now, and I don't see anything that changes that in the future. I mean, it is a huge distribution system that has been getting into the minds of more and more consumers since 1886, uh, when John Pemberton, you know, at Jacob's Pharmacy in Atlanta first ser served up the first one. It's, it, it is in the minds of people the product all over the world and it, there'll be more people and it will be in their minds more firmly and over time they should make a little more per drink. Uh, so it, I, I, I don't know how in the world anybody would successfully dethrone uh, Coca-Cola. From its historical performance to recent market trends, we're unpacking everything you need to know about KO stock. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just getting started, this analysis is designed to provide you with a comprehensive understanding of Coca-Cola's position in the market. So grab your favorite beverage and let's get into the details of Coca-Cola's stock analysis. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell to stay updated on our latest analyses. Let's pop the cap off this analysis and dive in. Market Overview. In today's segment, we'll start with a look at the broader market trends affecting consumer staples like Coca-Cola. From global economic shifts to changing consumer preferences in the post-pandemic world, we'll see how these factors are shaping the landscape for Coca-Cola in 2024. Financial Performance Next up, we'll pour over Coca-Cola's financial health. We'll analyze the company's earnings reports, revenue growth, and, most importantly for our dividend-savvy viewers, its dividend history and sustainability. Is Coca-Cola continuing its legacy as a reliable dividend payer? Stay tuned to find out. Investment Potential then, we'll fizz into the valuation section, where we assess Coca-Cola's stock through various lenses, including the Discounted Cash Flow, DCF, Dividend Discount Model, DDM, and the Tried and True Graham Valuation Method. We're here to determine if KO stock is a refreshing buy, a hold, or if it's time to pass it on. Conclusion We'll cap off our analysis with a summary of Coca-Cola's investment potential in 2024, considering all the factors we've discussed. Whether you're looking to add some sparkle to your portfolio or just keeping tabs on the market, we've got you covered. The valuation will be conducted using my Google Sheets valuation tool. This tool allows you to perform calculations for the most important valuation models, including DCF, DDM, and the Graham valuation method. With this Google Sheet, you get the stock data automatically, so there's no need to manually search for and input data, making it very user-friendly and easy to use. The sheet also features a valuation cockpit where you can view all the most important metrics from each valuation method at a glance. You can download this Google Sheet. The link is in the description below this video. Taking a look at Coca-Cola's recent stock performance, we see a stock that's been relatively stable. Closing at $59.99 and just a hair's breadth in after hours to $60, it seems to be holding steady. If you caught our last episode, we discussed the importance of stability in dividend stocks, and KO seems to be a textbook example. The day's trading stayed within a tight range between $59.68 and $60.21, and when you zoom out to the year's range, we're not seeing wild swings either with prices oscillating between $51.55 and $64.99. KO's market cap stands at a whopping $259.36 billion USD. Now, that's what you call a giant in the beverage industry, reflecting not just the size, but the global reach of Coca-Cola, and with an average volume of 13. 
15M, there's no shortage of investor attention here. But let's talk dividends. After all, that's what we're here for, right? With a dividend yield of 3.07%, Coca-Cola continues to be a go-to for dividend investors. The company's commitment to shareholder returns is as strong as their brand. And that P-E ratio of 24.18 tells us that investors are still willing to pay a premium for this quality stock. Comparing Coca-Cola to its peers, like PepsiCo, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, and Philip Morris, we can see the competition in the consumer staples space is stiff, but KO holds its own with a brand loyalty that spans generations. We're fizzing through the numbers as we take a closer look at Coca-Cola's income statement for the recent quarters leading up to September 2023. We're here to dissect what these figures mean for investors like you, who are considering Coca-Cola as a potential addition to your dividend portfolio. Let's pop the tab on these financials and see what they're all about. In September 2023, Coca-Cola's revenue hit $11.95 billion, which is a sparkling 8.04% increase year over year. Now that's what we call growth that quenches the thirst for higher returns. But of course, with greater revenue, we often see rising operating expenses. And Coca-Colas were no exception. Bubbling up to $3.66 billion, that's a jump of over 13%, a substantial hike. But let's see how it played out on the bottom line. Net income for the quarter poured in at $3.09 billion, a robust rise of 9.27% from the previous year. That's a strong sign of profitability, and profitability is key when we're talking about the sustainability of dividends. And speaking of profit, the net profit margin has seen a modest uptick of 1.14%, resting at a comfortable 25.83%. Earnings per share, or EPS, is a figure that a lot of investors watch closely and Coca-Cola's EPS has bubbled up by 7.25% to 74 cents. For dividend enthusiasts, a rising EPS often signals the potential for future dividend hikes. And let's not overlook EBITDA, an increase of 10.12% to $3.93 billion. This indicator of a company's operating performance is looking effervescent, my friends. Now, the only figure that didn't see a change is the effective tax rate, standing firm at 12.84%. Keeping that tax rate steady can mean more predictable net income, which can lead to more predictable dividends. So, what do we make of Coca-Cola's income statement? Growth in revenue and net income, a solid net profit margin, and a steady tax rate paint the picture of a company that's maintaining its financial health, an important consideration for us as dividend investors. Are these numbers sweet enough for you? Or do you have concerns about the operating expenses? Let's discuss in the comments below. As we can see from the bar graph, Coca-Cola's total assets have seen a refreshing increase of 5.52% year over year, reaching a robust $97.58 billion. This is a strong indicator that the company is not just growing, but also solidifying its foundation. Zooming in on liquidity, Coca-Cola's cash and short-term investments have fizzed up to an impressive $15.44 billion, a 16.76% increase from the previous year. This spike in liquidity is like having a cold Coke on a hot day, it's exactly what you want to see. Now, let's balance that with the liabilities. Coca-Cola's total liabilities have also climbed up by 2.51%, standing at $69.75 billion. It's important to keep an eye on this, as too much debt can make the financials go flat. But for now, Coca-Cola's debt levels seem manageable in relation to their assets. Peering further down, we see that Coca-Cola's total equity amounts to $27.83 billion. Remember, Equity is what's left after you subtract liabilities from assets, and it's a measure of a company's net value. Another metric to sip on is the price-to-book ratio, which is currently at 9.84. This is a bit on the higher side, suggesting that the market values Coca plus some Coca-Cola well above its net asset value. For some, this represents the brand's premium. For others, it could be a caution for potential overvaluation. What's your take on Coca-Cola's financial position? Let us know in the comments below. Glancing at the chart, it's clear that there's been quite the activity in Coca-Cola's cash reserves. But remember, the ebb and flow of cash is natural for a giant like Coca-Cola. Let's break down what each number is telling us. Starting with net income, we've got a robust figure of $3.09 billion, marking a 9.27% jump year over year. That's a good sign. It means the company's core business is generating more profit than the year before, which is always good news for dividend seekers. Moving to cash from operations, we're looking at a significant increase, 22.09%, up to reach $4.30 billion. This is the cash generated from Coca-Cola's day-to-day business, and this growth is a testament to Coca-Cola's operational strength. However, when we look at cash from investing activities, there's a notable decline of 58.72%, with a cash outflow of $1.66 billion. 
This could be due to Coca-Cola investing in new equipment, buying back shares, or other long-term investments. It's a big number, but investing in the future is essential for sustained growth. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Cash from financing activities shows a dramatic decrease of 173.67%, with a negative cash flow of $3.09 billion. This could be due to the company paying off debt or returning value to shareholders via dividends and share repurchases, which could explain the negative figure. The net change in cash shows a decrease of 157.37%, with a reduction of $642 million. It seems like a red flag, but considering the cash used in investing and financing, it could simply indicate that Coca-Cola is leveraging its cash reserves for strategic moves. Finally, the free cash flow which is the cash a company has after it covers its operating expenses and capital expenditures, is at $1.77 billion, despite decreasing by 61%. Free cash flow is crucial because it's the money that's available for dividends, and a decrease could impact dividend payments. However, given Coca-Cola's history and scale, they likely have plans to ensure dividend sustainability. So what's the takeaway from Coca-Cola's cash flow statement? There's a lot of movement, but it's not all turbulence. The increase in operational cash suggests strong underlying business performance. And while investments and financing have led to a net cash decrease, it's not uncommon for a company of this size to have quarters like this as they rebalance their strategies. Would you consider Coca-Cola's current cash flow a sign of strength or a cautionary tale? Chime in with your thoughts in the comments below. Well, today we're blending some numbers to concoct the perfect financial smoothie with Coca-Cola's discounted cash flow, or as I like to call it, the dollar-licious cash fizz model. Picture this, a spreadsheet that's like the secret recipe to Coca-Cola's value. With a sprinkle of growth rates here and a dash of cash flows there, we're mixing up a valuation potion that could tell us if Coca-Cola's stock is the real deal or just syrupy overexcitement. Stirring the cauldron, we see Coca-Cola's future cash flows from the deep wells of $11.95 billion in 2022 to an even deeper $19.22 billion in 2030. Magic? No, it's math. And it shows us the company's potion for profitability is brewing strong. But wait, you can't just drink this potion straight up. We've got to discount it, not with coupons, folks, but with a 9% discount rate, chilling those future cash flows to a present value that's cooler than a fridge stocked with Coke. And what's this at the bottom of the cauldron? The terminal value. The grand finale sip that wraps up our future cash flow party with a sweet $7.39 billion. Add it all up, and we get an equity value that can make any investor's mouth water. Now, here comes the Fizz the DCF price per share, ringing in at $13.97. That's like saying, here's what one share of Coca Cola might really be worth if our Crystal Cola Ball is right. Is it less than the current trading price? If so, investors, we might just have found ourselves a value stock. So grab your financial goblets and let's toast to the power of DCF, the spellbinding mix of art, science, and a pinch of market wizardry. Will you be adding a splash of Coca-Cola to your investment portfolio? Share your thoughts and let's brew up a conversation in the comments below. Now we're dusting off our magnifying glasses and crunching numbers on Coca-Cola's dividends using the trusty dividend discount model, or DDM for short. Look here, sleuths. We've spotted Coca-Cola's average growth rate at 4.55% for 2023. Quite the growth spurt, isn't it? But hold on to your calculators. The plot thickens. The weighted average cost of capital, aka WASC, is lurking around at 7.32%. And what does our DDM crystal ball reveal? An intrinsic value of $56.16 per share. But in a twist of fate, Coca-Cola's current stock price is at $59.99. Yes, you heard it right. That's a difference of minus 0.58%. The stock is trading just a whisper above our calculated value. So what's an investor to do? Is Coca-Cola's stock a refreshing buy, or is it a case of flat soda? The DDM has given us a clue, but it's up to you to decide if you'll take a sip of this investment opportunity. We've got a special treat. We're taking a sip of the classic Graham valuation method to see if Coca-Cola's stock is as refreshing for your portfolio as its drinks are for your taste buds. Feast your eyes on this, my fellow number crunchers. We've got the EPS, that's earnings per share, sitting pretty at $2.47. But it's not just about what Coca-Cola earns, it's about how it grows. And grow it does, at a rate of 5.9%, not too fast, not too slow, just how we like it. Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing, gave us the formula and we're putting it to work. With a yield of AAA bonds at 4.87%, we've brewed up an intrinsic value of $45.30 for Coca-Cola's stock. But wait, the current market price stands at $59.99. By Graham's standards, that's a 132.42% difference. Talk about a market fizz. Now, Graham loved a good sale, and so do we. He taught us to look for a margin of safety, and we've got it pegged at 65%. 
that means our acceptable buy price would be $29.45, but the market's serving up a pricier dish. So investors, is Coca-Cola the vintage stock you want in your cellar? Or is the price leaving you flat? If you're thirsty for more juicy valuation insights, give us a like, drop your two cents in the comments, and subscribe for more financial wisdom served up daily. And now, we're in the cockpit with Coca-Cola Company and navigating through the skies of valuation with our trusty tool, the Valuation Cockpit. Buckle up as we take off on this financial journey. Here in the captain's seat, we're eyeing three key metrics, the discounted cash flow, dividend discount model, and the time-honored Benjamin Graham valuation model. Each of these will help us chart our course toward making an informed investment decision about KO. In the DCF zone, we have an average grow rate, buzzing at 6.12%, and a perpetual growth rate cruising at a steady 2.50%. But to calculate our landing, we're using a discount rate of 9.00% giving us a DCF price per share of $13.97. Now that's a figure that might make a value investor's heart take flight. Switching gears to the dividend discount model, we're flying at a WASI of 7.32% with an intrinsic value altitude of $56.16. Compare that to our current market price of $59.99 and we might be in for some turbulence or perhaps an opportunity only a skilled investor can tell. And finally, according to the Benjamin Graham valuation model, we're navigating a bit closer to value investing territory. With an intrinsic value of $45.30 and an acceptable buy price of $29.45, we're flying at a margin of safety of 65%. It's like having an emergency parachute for your investment portfolio. So dear passengers, whether you're looking to land a deal with Coca-Cola or simply scouting the investment landscape, these instruments provide critical data to guide your decisions. Are we heading for clear skies with KO or is it time to adjust our altitude? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Spread the wealth of knowledge and help our community grow. Every like, share, and subscribe means more than you know. Until next time, stay savvy, invest smartly, and keep your portfolio as diversified as your tastes. Cheers.